Welcome to Film Freaks. This is Justin Llewellyn. And Eddie Williams. And here, well, and welcome to our spoiler discussion of Black Panther. And here we're going to go into more details about what about the movie and basically some more things that we didn't talk about in our non-spoiler. Yep. So to basically start things off, Black Panther is another film that basically is like your typical solo film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And, it, and there's something I noticed with a lot of these is that, have you ever noticed that in like a lot of the current Marvel films, they always like to do flashbacks? Like, or sorry, they always like to, before the main story starts, they do like something that's set like an earlier time. Mm -hmm. It's building up the character. Yeah. In this one, we actually start in the early 90s. where yeah. well 92. before. Well, before that, it, it describes the history and everything about how people were raging war against the uh, this uh, this powerful force that came down to what, that that formed Wakanda. The, yeah, Wakanda and throughout in that area, and it's like this this like superpower blue stuff, uh, and it's like this metal stuff that's like strong. It's like metal. a heal. It's like an, yeah, a, it it's gives a you heal. a powerful yeah. healing ability. Ability also. The metal it creates is some of the strongest metal on Earth yeah. in history, in the universe. So. And I actually found that fascinating, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have, basically, it cuts to, and I'm not going to kid, this is actually cuts to the year I was born, 1992. Mm -hmm. And we get to pretty much where it takes place in Oakland, California, where you have these two guys that are, like, I guess they're doing, like, some kind of, they're trying to do, I, I think they were playing on some kind of heist or something because they were. I don't know. They were kind of, like, gang-related type guys and stuff. Yeah. Well, then the, you know, they hear that the Wakanda people showed up and with Black Panther. And this Black Panther is the original Black Panther who plays, who eventually is the older man who died in, in uh, Civil War. Civil War and the Yeah, blow it's, it's yeah. uh, T'Challa's uh, father to, yeah. to, to. Tachaka or yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And basically, they show up to try to convince them about who they are. And they, it actually turns out those guys are actually from Wakanda because yeah. they actually changed their voice into the accents. Yeah, and they had the blue thing they in their blue lip. thing in their lip that, that shows. identifies yeah. that you're Wakanda. I actually found yeah. that really fascinating. Yeah, I did too. Um, and, uh, and then after that, we, we pretty much see that one of them gets killed because uh, one of them feels like. One, well, one of them was selling the shit to the guy known as uh, uh, Claw. Claw, played by Andy Serkis. Mm -hmm. And backstabbing, he tried to actually kill the father there when he was younger. But then the father ended up killing. That was ended up being his brother. Yeah, which is basically, and this is, well, we're going we're gonna to lead this. We're talking about later. But that that there's a boy that's in this scene that you later that later grows up to be Michael B. Jordan's character. Yeah. And... Uh, so the film actually sets it up to where that's what happened to that was the backstory with uh, Black Panther's Which father. Which was probably hinting that's what actually not hinting it, it comes out that that's what made Michael B. Jordan become a villain. Yeah, because he he sees all Black Panther and Wakanda people as enemies yep. for killing his father. Exactly, so. and then the rest of the story deals with the the rest of the story deals with Black Panther. Uh, taking the realm, taking the realm of his, father. his father's hair, of his throne and everything. And he goes to that ritual, which I thought was pretty cool because basically he has to challenge these other guys that come into play to, uh, determine, to determine who's the war. And what's yeah. funny is these guys. Maybe I'm. It's <laughs> for some reason I thought these guys the way they have like this white powder and stuff. They remind me off of Ace Ventura and Nature Calls. calls. <laughs> yeah, the Watcha Tribe. The what you do? Yeah, 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 yeah. It did remind me of that. And I thought with the drums and all that. I thought Ace was gonna go boom, boom, boom. <laughs> right. Yeah, doing that like what um uh what's his face did in uh, Hot Chicks. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Right. Yeah. So. I'm saying. Yeah, it was a. Uh, it was a pretty neat. Visuals were great. Uh, the waterfall was really that beautiful. That was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I love that waterfall sequence. Yeah. And plus, I like the way that they have like this ritual and stuff. And they had that guy with that kind of like like cup thing hang out of his yeah. mouth and yeah. shit. Like they, these are all tribes. What it is is a bunch of tribes that actually come together and form one, like kind of like your own their own United Nations. Yeah, you got different tribes from different all parts of the jungle. Who pretty much are not part of each other, but when they when shit goes down, they like you know it's like a council. Yeah, yeah. So and then we had we after he becomes king and everything, he actually this kind of reminds me something out of the Lion King because he ends up going into this kind of sand thing where he gets covered in sand or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and then he goes into pretty much like a 
a vision or or kind where of he a, talks to his dad. kind of a isolated area where he talks to his father. Yeah. And this sequence kind of reminds me something out of the Lion King. Yeah, this movie does have a lot of Lion King elements to it. Yeah, yeah. because in this sequence he talks to his father and everything about how he's pretty much not ready to continue unless you know since he passed away and everything. Yeah. Uh, and then that actually is a good arc for him because I like how he's trying to conquer, trying to become who, a king like his dad. Yeah. So I, I really enjoyed that about his character a lot. Yeah. And then the rest of the story basically... Basically, T'Challa, the Black Panther, he's fighting the uh, Claw. He wants yeah, the Claw. Because, because the Claw, I think, was responsible for his dad's... No, no, he, he wasn't. Worked, no, it was actually the other guy. No, he, he stole their... He stole their, their weapons. Their weapons, that's yeah, what it was. That's yeah. what it was. Because basically... Uh, the, the, Andy Serkis' character is a guy who, if you remember in Age of Ultron, he was an arms dealer, or he was a black market uh, arms dealer. Yep. And uh, basically, he's been on the run for like 30 years or something, and the CIA has been looking for him. And he pretty much teams up with Michael B. Jordan in order to, they, they steal this kind of weapon that was from the Wakanda tribe, yep. or, or Wakanda country. Yep. And the rest of the film deals with Black Panther and them having to pretty much get it back yeah while on the way they come across martin freeman's character who is basically the cia agent who was in charge of uh capturing nemo from civil war yep and uh i like that martin freeman is basically kind of like the audience type of character because he's basically witnessing everything as it goes along because at first yeah, he gets to go to wakanda and all yeah, that yeah because at first he kind of doesn't trust the, the guy because basically he was he was going after him in civil war yeah and stuff but then as he goes along with uh black panther thing he starts to become fascinated like wow this is some pretty cool shit you got here <laughs> yeah you know and that one of my favorite sequences is that scene in the casino where basically the they're all trying to, you know, gamble, gamble yeah. and everything, and they're looking for information about uh, Andy Serkis's character. Yeah. And then they have this cool fight that takes place where they're all, you know, have their shootout and stuff. And there's that part, that funny part, where Andy Serkis's character is like, you know, shooting, shoots the money, and he says, "I made it rain." Hey, yeah, <laughs> he brought a lot of comedy to this role. I really enjoyed. Yeah. Andy Serkis was great. Dude. I don't think I ever hate him in anything. No, he I, is so. And it, it's great, different man. seeing him because I'm so used to seeing him in like motion capture roles. This is cool that he's, you know, playing more of yeah. a live action role. Yeah, you, you know? gotta think this is a guy who did fucking Caesar, Caesar and he did King Kong. King, no, he not only did he did King Kong, but he also Gollum. did Gollum from fucking Lord of the Rings. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because him and Martin Freeman have a reunion here where because Martin Freeman played Bilbo in the in the Hobbit films. Yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah, and and you know what I find fascinating is that as the story goes along, it really kind of becomes more like a thriller type vibe because throughout the film, it's interesting how Michael B. Jordan's character he starts out as kind of just you know a, a kind of a sidekick thief. like a, like well he's more of a thief who's behind working everything working for uh, Andy Circus. No, then, he's working for him. Well, the th uh, yeah the thing is, is all that shit going down, and then Andy uh, then in the middle of the film. Uh, Michael B. Jordan actually backstabs Andy Serkis and kills him. Yeah, and he even kills his own girlfriend, which yeah. I thought that right there was actually pretty fucking, like, like yeah. pretty ruthless. It, it is, because it shows the devotion. He wants to pay back Black Panther and the Wakanda people for killing his father. Yeah, which I... He will kill his fan, uh, his girlfriend and anybody in his way. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I, I, it's one of the things I really enjoyed about with, with them setting villains up like these is that you can take a lot of great approaches like that. Yeah. And so he don't fuck around. He's like, get out of my way. <laughs> yeah. And then he so, gets himself, he takes himself all the way to Wakanda and he takes the body of Andy Serkis' character, Claw, and yeah. pretty much everybody, you know, the Black Panther and Wakanda people have been looking for him. So he's thinking that would get him an you know, early entrance. Yeah. And that's when he challenges the Black Panther to a fight and he ends up Pretty beating much. the f he well, he does a Dark Knight rises, rises on, on his him. shit yeah, yeah where he beats on him almost to death and everything and then he basically fucking throws him off the off the ledge yeah, into the waterfall thousand foot cliff thing yeah in the waterfall yeah and that's something that you know if this was more of a film that kind of stood out more by its own it would work but at the same time I kind of already knew like how it would pretty much go that. You can kind of tell how it's playing out. Yeah, that's... That's what hurts the film a little bit for me. Yeah, because you, you pretty much know how it's going to unfold. Yeah. But 
then we pretty much see that he basically wants to call the shots now. He want he's now rightful king yep. after, and he even kills Forrest Whitaker because ter it turns out that Forrest Whitaker's character we didn't bring this in our non spoiler, but he's actually the uncle of of Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, and so basically because he felt responsible, he gets himself killed, mm -hmm. and you know it was pretty. And this is where Michael B. Jordan takes over as king of yeah. Wakanda. And he pretty much becomes like more of like a like a dictator where he's yeah. killing the people and torturing them, well, making them burn all their their prices, yeah. like their prize pressures and their history. That, but at the same time, he's using that power because it does kind of play political elements in this film. Where the, I mean, I'm not going to go into really that. But it, it, he pretty much wants to take over the world. And, that, and he yeah. wants to pretty much put a stop to other places that yeah. would have, like, martyrs assigned. Because yeah. basically it's revealed that uh, he, he's, he does that where he, he kills the, martyr, the martyrs yeah. that are assigned to, like, these organizations and wants to become rightful here, or yeah. rightful He leaders. basically wants to rule yeah. everything. Yeah. That's so. what I'm saying. And uh, what I also enjoy, too, about this is that when we finally – we get some, some reveals about how – Basically, later on, he goes through a flashback of his own, which I thought was kind of emotional. Where yeah. when he becomes king, he goes to that same ritual that Black Panther did, where he goes inside that sand thing, he sees his yeah. father and yeah. stuff. And I thought that for the first time, I could felt like I felt a lot of sympathy for yeah. his character, yeah, for you, a villain. You get that typical te temporary sympathy, yeah, yeah, because you really feel the emotion go out of him because that he gets to see his father in person, yeah. like as a grown adult, yeah, and uh. You know, it, you can see a lot of the motivation for him there. Yeah. And uh, the other thing I, I also, and then as it goes along too, Black Panther actually. Body is found. Yeah, yeah. The, he actually, this is actually interesting is that they go in the snow this in this area. Yeah, so, I know. I was like, damn, I didn't know there was any area in Africa that had snow. But I guess up in the higher elements of mountains, there's one little area. But anyways. Yeah, there's just like this group they pretty much had beef with for years. Yeah. Apparently, they're going to recon, they end up reconciling because they know they have to take down Michael B. Jordan's character. Yeah. But that also pushes a little bit of the stakes because now it seems like Michael B. Jordan is now in control. He gets the his, uh, the, his own arm. He gets the people that are there to breed his own army. And a lot of people don't, we didn't go into details earlier, but Michael B. Jordan, you're asking also, where did he learn all his techniques and this corruptness and this taking over monarchies and killing them all? He was actually an ex CIA agent that worked for the dude, though. For Martin Freeman. For Martin Freeman. Yeah. But he went rogue. Yeah. So uh, I really do like a lot about that, as, too. Mm -hmm. And and then basically, it has to be that Black Panther has to stop him after he comes back. And and what's interesting is that they actually have a fight where, where pretty much when he. It kind of remind me of Iron Man, where Iron Man fought like. Th that one dude that wore his same suit. Yeah. It, that's what it did with where um, basically you have Black Panther wearing his suit and he's fighting his Michael B. Jordan who wears kind of like the gold version. Yeah, which I the thought black was, and gold well, it was version. it yeah. actually kind of made this made the, the the it made it very, you know, even match. Panther so, versus Panther. Yeah, I really yeah. enjoyed that. And I also like that part where, where you have the, the, his army and the other army kind of fighting together. Yeah. Where you get, like, those rhinos coming in, which I thought were pretty cool. That was cool, but you know what? This movie had a lot of parts where Michael B. Jordan was killing everybody. He slaughtered that one chick, that yeah. main chick. Oh, yeah, damn! That. I'm like, he slit her throat. He killed Forrest Whitaker. He almost killed Black Panther. Yeah. This dude's doing some fucking damage, man. I know. That's what I really saying. will praise that. Yeah, they did really good on that. Yeah, they yeah. definitely did. And then... Basically becomes like this whole thing with the train because it's revealed that his sister that's in the film, she developed a kind of a something to do with the train, like having like the tracks or something like it, it's that's like a that's digging out their forces. They yeah. Can use, yeah. And basically it has a standoff where them two are fighting on this train area that's in the place. And I like this scene because it shows that when that trains go by, that they have to stand there for a while while they're talking to each other. Yeah, and then, kind of. And then you have Michael B. Jordan kind of insulting his family members that that died. Yeah. And they get in this big battle fight, and that's where Mike, uh, you know, you got Black Panther doing his final stab right through Michael B. Jordan's heart. Yeah. And then they do this one thing where they kind of like reconcile, and they kind of like, you know what, you know, I Michael B. Jordan's like, I just want to see Wakanda. 
and then you get kind of like that really closer, sad closer, even though he's been a ruthless villain, he gives him a ultimatum, and he's like, I don't want to, like, go to prison or anything, and he pretty much just let me go ahead and just look at Wakanda and die, and then yeah. Michael B. Jordan pulls a knife out so he can bleed out, and mm -hmm. he passes away. This has got really strong Lion King elements in this film. It does, definitely. You can yeah. feel the emotions there. And it, just to top it all off, there's a fucking score to place through out there. I thought it was going to go, Waha! Yeah. Right off the Lion King. I thought it was going to do that, but it changes it. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like, and that's what kind of goes back to the whole elements that we were saying about the Lion King. This film does kind of have some like a uh, elements that are from Lion King in that regard because yeah. you have scenes that are kind of similar to it, like with the whole him seeing his father, Black Panther seeing his father and uh, stuff. Then you have the part yeah. where he falls off the cliff, cliff and, and things then like he's that. Defeated. Then he's got to come out stronger than ever. Yeah. And defeat. Yeah, and then you have like the stuff where he has to get revenge on another family and member. Then he it's had basically Shakar or whatever Scar and yeah. Lion King, who was, was killing all the good people and, and he hurting was people, trying to be king basically and be king, but he was also hurting good people, yeah, good animals. And in this one, Michael B. Jordan, he's king and he's hurting everybody who defies him, even innocent people. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's it, like, it yeah. is very reminiscent, but I it seemed like they they did like their own kind of spin on it, which I yeah. really enjoyed. Yeah, it was a good joke. So, yeah. I really enjoyed that, and and so, and then the film basically has it to where they try to set up their new location of like headquarters and stuff yeah. at the same place that Michael B. Jordan's dad was killed at. Yeah. So I actually thought that was fascinating. Yeah. And then we have the post credit scenes, which set up that they're going to go internationally, uh, where they want pretty much peace. Like they're yeah. they're wanting to bring out the best for Wakanda to the new and world, to, to, and into to everybody, and they want to be together and this is pretty much setting up for infinity, infinity wars. wars and it go does do a post credit scene with bucky yeah bucky yeah. actually shows up at the very end and of it they're letting and him live there with them yeah so. which i thought I, they were gonna do captain america what i know i thought captain that? america was gonna show up there but apparently it was bucky i guess so yeah he'll we'll, we'll see it when the next that's one. funny because he was actually trying to kill bucky in the civil war yeah that's what i'm saying the whole whole deal but anyways yeah pretty much he goes there and it's pretty much hinting that, uh, you know, the reason why Black Panther's saying, hey, you know, why we got to get ready and all this, because Thanos is yeah, but, coming. But I, I really enjoyed that because it seems like they're really putting a lot of things you know at ease, and they're really making the world building a lot more into line with how, like, they're, because it makes you wonder if they're going to put, like, a couple months or, like, shortly after with uh, Black Panther or the next one. You know what? I actually hope they open it where it's like, you remember how Dark Knight Rises open where the guy's just giving a speech? Yeah. And it's really dark and just like, ooh, like something just feels unease. Like something big's coming. Yeah. I hope they open something that really dramatic in Infinity Wars. Something different. Something so dark. It's like where it shows Black Panther talking and he's like, we got to come together. There's yeah. now or never. And it's like, you got to make it look like Thanos is the it man because he well, is. Well, yeah, they've been building up to this for like a long six years now since the first Avengers. Well, technically, they've been building up since two thousand eight. Well, Iron Man, yeah, but he wasn't first introduced or referenced until the first Avengers. No, I'm just saying, like, like this whole universe has been building since two thousand eight. Well, I'm like, godly, and we're finally here. Yep, the final ten years world. later. Yep. So. so I'm definitely looking forward to it. And I can say this was quite a blast of the yeah, film. Like, great I, cinematography, I'm, great acting. Great story. Story, like, beautiful you know, every, visuals. I will say, like we said earlier in our non-spoiler, the pacing. It was a little look, dragged at front, but it wasn't too bad because it yeah. picked up. But And then there was some familiar territory that did was kind of very expected with this. So it's not yeah. really a flaw as it is just a... It's like formula our, that's been used so many times. Yeah, it's not original. It's yeah, but it. other than that, I still highly enjoyed the film. And with yeah. that, I, I I give the film a a compelling grade on the Film Freaks meter. Yeah, I give it a B compelling grade on the Film Freaks meter. Also, fair enough. And for those of you who have also seen it, um, let us know in the comments below of what you thought about Black Panther. And if you like what you see here, you can feel free to like and subscribe and check out some other reviews here at FilmFreaks.com. And we'll be seeing you in our next review. All right. Later. We'll see you later.